Hello, today's video is about photoelectric effect. Photoelectric effect was one of the phenomena that puzzled scientists at the beginning of the 20th century because they were not able to explain the details of photoelectric effect based on the classical theory of, of light at that time. Photoelectric effect, as the name suggests, has to do with two phenomena. Photo stands for light and electric for electricity. So it, it has to do with electricity and light. In front of you, you can see on your screen uh, an open PHET simulation photoelectric effect. You can find it on the PHET webpage. And at this moment, uh, ignore this uh, electric setup around here. Just uh, notice that there is a metal plate over here. Uh, you can see that the metal plate right now is calcium. You can change between different metals in here. And we have a lamp. And photoelectric effect just means that when I shine light on that metal plate, electrons are ejected. And that's it. It's a pretty simple phenomena. However, when scientists started making measurements and when they were looking at details of photoelectric effect, they were really puzzled because what they saw was not what they expected to see. Now, to, able, to be able to uh, understand what they were expecting, you need to understand several things. One of them is that at that time, uh, thinking of light as a, as a wave, the intensity of the light, here you can uh, change the intensity of the light beam, or the brightness of the light, so to speak, represented the height and or the, yeah, the height or the depth of the of the crests and the troughs of these light waves. So if you think about a, a transverse wave, how high the crests are, of course, determines how energetic the the wave is. And that's how uh, they thought of light: that the brighter the light, the more uh, the, the higher the waves and the more energetic the light is. So here's what I want you to sort of um, imagine. Um, Imagine a beach, as you can see on the screen in here, and we have we have waves oncoming at the beach at a particular frequency, and uh, so the water these water waves represent the light light of a given frequency or a given wavelength of a given color, so to say, that's arriving on the beach, and these pebbles in here represent the electrons in the metal, and as you can see, as the waves arrive. They hit the, the pebbles and they move them. And to go with our analogy, let's look at this particular picture in here. So on, on the beach, there are pebbles over here in this red section, which are not moving anymore. And those could represent the electrons that were ejected from the metal. And then here we have a section of electrons that are being regularly moved by the, by the oncoming waves. And uh, so, so here we have the, the light waves that are, that are hitting the beach. Um, so what were the expectations? One of the expectations was that no matter what the frequency of the of this incoming wave is, thinking of light, no matter what color of light, okay, if the light is bright enough, meaning if these waves are tall enough, they should have enough energy to move the pebbles up the beach. So going back to this simulation in here, that's played. Um, you know, I can I can change here the, the color of the light. Let's say go. Let's go here to the red light. So the expectation was that if I take a red light and I make it bright enough, you can see that no no electrons are ejected right now. But they thought that once if I make I, I could reach a certain brightness at which the electrons would be moved. Now maybe there would be a a slight time delay between the the time when I um, when I shine the light and the time when the electron is ejected but eventually um, light of any frequency once it gets bright enough should be ejecting electrons and again looking at this um, this pebble analogy in here you can see that maybe these waves no matter what their frequency is or how frequent they arrive on the beach um, each individual wave might have a enough energy to move the pebble just a certain amount up the beach but eventually eventually with enough waves oncoming with enough you know energy given to each pedal pebble the, the pebble should make it up to this section in here which we um, 
which represents the you know the the ejected electrons however this was not observed so with light of for for this metal plate um, no matter which visible light in here I choose well I guess here we got some for the for the violet but but if we go between blue and red you can see that even with 100% brightness meaning uh, very bright light uh, very tall waves uh, no electrons are ejected no matter how long you wait so this was puzzling um, the other thing that was puzzling uh, was once they were able to measure and with the setup in here um, with you, when you set up this electrical field and you can you can um, measure how strong the field has to be in, in order to slow the electrons you can use it to to find the energy of these ejected electrons so this is what was very puzzling the energy uh, in in the wave model uh, remember that the it is the brightness or, or the height of this wave that's, that represents the energy of the of the light in the wave model and so you would you would think that as you change the intensity, as I move here the intensity, change the height of the waves, it should be changing the energy of the ejected electrons. Okay? So a higher wave should eject a faster electron. Again, this is not observed. Observe how fast these electrons are. So what their kinetic energy is at this particular brightness or this particular wave energy uh, of the incoming light. You can compare that to these electrons if they are ejected now. I don't know if you can see it, we have, of course we have less electrons ejected, but if you look at their energy, how fast they are moving, they have exactly the same amount of energy. So regardless of the intensity of the height of the wave, of the brightness of the light, the ejected electrons all have the same um, kinetic energy. And again, uh, classical wave theory of light was not able to explain this. And the third thing um, that the classical wave theory wasn't able to explain, and this is the one that is the most, that would be probably the most puzzling to me, is that if you look at how the electrons are ejected, the electrons are ejected one by one. So there is no time um, when the electrons, you know, where, where you would have, so to say, a, a wave front of electrons. So the electrons are always ejected one electron, then another electron, then another electron. Uh, you never have uh, multiple electrons ejected simultaneously. And this is what you would expect if, if uh, light was a wave. I mean, after all, you know, it would be very strange to expect that this wave front um, that you see on your screen right now, this water wave as it comes, that you can see that its energy is spread over a certain area, over a certain length of the beach. And I think it would be very, very puzzling to see that a wave arrives on the beach and all of its energy somehow shrinks into a single spot and instead of moving many of these pebbles at the same time just all of the energy would be given just to one pebble and the energy would and the pebble would be shot you know 100 meters away from the beach uh, you wouldn't expect that with if, if light was behaving as a wave however the observations showed that this is actually what happens so as the light wave or as the light hits instead of moving multiple electrons at the same time uh, all of the energy uh, goes into one electron and the electron is ejected from the from the plate and uh, and then of course the you know the the oncoming wave so the, the energy of the another oncoming wave is given to another electron uh, you can never get multiple electrons ejected from the from the plate at the same time so these were the the details of the photoelectric effect that were that physicists were not able to explain based on classical wave theory of light. Well, in in fact, it wasn't until uh, Albert Einstein wrote his paper on photoelectric effect. Um, even though Einstein was not a favorite 
of, uh, of quantum theory. He actually hated it. And he, there was a big, huge debate between Einstein and Bohr and uh, Niels Bohr and, and the quantum theorists. It was uh, actually Albert Einstein who was able to explain uh, or, or he came up with a theory that was absolutely consistent with the observations of the photoelectric effect. It was uh, for this theory um, in connection with some of his other papers that he published in 1905 that he uh, received a um, Nobel Prize. That's all for now. Um, enjoy the PhD simulation and good luck with your assignment on photoelectric effect.